How's it going my curious bunch of bakers? Welcome to another episode of the Principles of Baking series. In today's video, we'll find out how different amounts of sugar affect our bread dough. So let's get in the kitchen and get started. Sugar comes in many forms, from fully processed white sugar, to light brown sugar, to dark brown sugar, treacle, molasses, maple syrup, honey, agave syrup, corn syrup, and more. They all share one main characteristic, and that is sweetness. But depending on the type, they can also have distinct flavors, from lightly caramelized to bitter and even burnt. Sugar is one of the most used additives in bread making, and it is also one of the most misunderstood ingredients in bread making. I have already covered the topic of sugar in a couple of dedicated videos. You can find those and many more in the Principles of Baking playlist. In this video, we'll find out how the sugar content affects our dough. We will make 8 breads in total, all of which will contain white bread flour, yeast, salt and water. The first 4 breads will be made with white sugar, with a content of 3%, 5%, 10% and 20% in baker's percentage terms. The next 4 breads will be made with black treacle, also at 3%, 5%, 10% and 20%. Each recipe contains 150 grams of flour, 90 grams of water, 3 grams salt and 2 grams yeast. All of the breads will be baked at 170 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Before we start, let's talk about black treacle. It is a common ingredient here in the UK. Treacle is a very thick, sweet, dark and bitter syrup. It is similar to pure molasses, but with a stronger, almost burnt flavor. In my opinion, this type of syrup works best in stronger flavored breads with whole grains and seeds. It can be a bit of a nightmare to work with as it's so thick. Spooning it out of the container can be messy. So I wanted to start off the video by showing you a little trick. To make the treacle or molasses easier to handle, dip your spoon in very hot or even boiling water. The molasses will slide right off of it. For best results, you should re-warm the spoon after each use. Okay, tips out of the way, let's move on to mixing some dough. We'll start off with the 4 white sugar breads. They will be made in order, 3%, 5%, 10% and 20%. And when you see them together on the screen, they will always be in the same order from left to right. And the same goes for the treacle breads which we'll make later. They will all be mixed the same way, they'll be fermented the same way. They will all receive two folds during bulk fermentation. So I'm not going to talk you through the process here. This is not a recipe video. Instead I'll just talk about the effects of sugar on bread dough. And I'll mention some observations that are made along the way of making these breads. So how does sugar affect bread dough? Sugar affects various bread dough characteristics depending on how much of it is added. It can make the dough stickier and slightly harder to work with. It can weaken the gluten structure, which can be beneficial in some cases and detrimental in others. Sugar makes bread sweeter, it makes the crumbs softer, it might even add a flavor, depending on which type of sugar you're using. But there is one thing that it almost never does, and that is speed up fermentation. That's a great misconception about sugar. It only helps with fermentation when used in very small quantities, 3% or less. And we will clearly see this later on in the video, when it comes to final proofing time. But yeast loves sugar, right? So why would it slow down if you gave it more of it? Flour contains enzymes, which when water is added, break down the starch in the flour and convert it to simple sugars. The enzymes in the flour create the food for the yeast. Yeast feeds on those simple sugars, which makes it multiply, create gas, alcohol and ferment our bread dough. Yeast does not need any additional sugar. I have never ran into a situation where I've needed to boost fermentation with anything, let alone sugar. The sugar which we use in bread making is hygroscopic, which means that it attracts water. Sugar pulls water through the yeast cell membrane, which dehydrates it and slows it down. In fact, salt does the same. But like I mentioned earlier, sugar can actually boost fermentation if used in small amounts. The reason this works is because unlike the sugar that the enzymes create, the sugar that we add to bread dough is instantly available for the yeast. And in low concentrations, it doesn't have a great dehydrating effect. Okay, let's observe the final proof here. The first bread was placed in the oven 45 minutes after final shaping. Each consecutive bread took an extra 15 minutes of final proofing, which means that the final bread took exactly double the time that the first did, which was an hour and a half. And that clearly demonstrates the slowing effect sugar has on fermentation. Okay, let's compare our white sugar bakes. We can already see great difference from the outside in the crust color. There's a nice gradient from left to right. The higher the sugar content, the darker the crust. Oh, and by the way, all the crusts are shiny because I brushed them with sugar syrup when they came out of the oven. That is just to make them nicer to look at. It is something that I would often do with sweetbreads anyway. It makes the crust color look a lot richer. 
Of course, the look and the taste of the bread is highly subjective. Someone may like a darker crust, someone may like a lighter crust, and the same goes for the taste. Someone may like a sweet bread, someone may not like sweetness at all. But let's look at the insides of these loaves. With a higher sugar content, the crumbs seem to be softer and more open. Again, it was an incremental increase with each jump in sugar percentage. And there was quite a big difference between the 3% sugar bread and the 20% sugar bread. The 3% one was just like your regular slightly sweet and white bread. Whereas the 20% one was something that I would use for a festive bake. A bread which is very rich. It would be a bread which also contains eggs and butter perhaps. Of course, there are no rules. I'm just here to demonstrate the effects, which are clearly evident here. But let's move on to the black treacle breads. Again, they're in the same order, from lowest to highest content, from left to right. And this time we can clearly see that even before the breads are baked. As the sugar increases, the dough becomes looser and stickier. So the 20% breads have to be shaped more tightly. That, along with the slowed fermentation, are just minor inconveniences. They are not issues. We simply work around them. We let our dough ferment for longer. We can add more yeast, or we can make the dough warmer or place it in a warmer area. I'm definitely not telling you to not use sugar. Just use it for the right reasons and expect the slight side effects, which you will have to deal with. There is a difference between using granulated sugar and syrups like black treacle, molasses or honey. Syrups are slightly acidic. Acidity can actually help with strengthening gluten, or at least in the case of adding syrups, not weakening the gluten too much. All the black treacle bread doughs were easier to handle than the granulated sugar ones. Another unique thing about syrup is that it's not 100% sugar. In order for it to be liquid, it needs to have a certain water content, which can range from 15 to 20%, which means that the hydration of the dough increases the more syrup you add to it. Okay, let's compare our black treacle loaves side by side. Of course, because of the color of the treacle itself, we can see much greater differences in the crust color. And of course, it's up to you to decide which one you like best. But there's also a much more dramatic difference in the crumb this time around. Even the 3% syrup dough has a more open crumb. When compared to the granulated sugar one, the acidity and the water content are surely playing a part here in improving the gluten structure. But the same rule applies here. The more sugar is added, or the more syrup is added, the softer and more open the crumb. And of course, the sweeter the bread. Even though treacle by itself has a very strong flavor, it doesn't come across as much when added to bread dough. Sugar certainly has its place in bread making. It can improve the flavor, eating quality, and the look of the bread. Use it for the right reasons, and be prepared to adjust your recipe to account for all the effects that sugar will have on it. There is no right or wrong amount of sugar, there are no laws for using certain sugars for certain breads. Experiment with it. Find out what works best for you and for your recipe. It is your bread, so make it your way. So what do you think these results? Have you noticed them in your baking? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more ideas like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.